Yeah. So I am fortunate to bring you John Scrivano, physician's assistant and uh, expert in obesity medicine for over 25 years. And John's going to talk a little bit, if you don't mind, John, about what I want to hear. You mentioned just for a moment about when you sit down with a patient who has some weight to lose, I would appreciate if you can talk a little bit about the amounts that they lose and what the interventions that you prescribe as far as for them to change this part, because we all know that's what we're all desperately seeking. I mean, mental health is at an all-time low in the U.S. and the world, I think, and partly because of COVID. And so I think everybody needs an opportunity to dig into their trauma and all the stuff that's underneath creating right. these addictive behaviors, which we all have. Sure. And when we uncover them, what do you do? How do you get to that point with people? Give us a little snapshot into your Practice. Yeah, so that right, so that that part of the interaction uh, that comes uh, with the patient having some confidence that you have in fact their best interests at heart and trust. So you have to be, that's absolutely right, and you have to be able to you have to be able to break barriers relatively quickly. So when you don't have any specific agenda other than getting the the individual to realize their optimal life, right? When that is your integrated and your, your overall and overreaching understanding, and when you can articulate that relatively quickly, then you're able to break some barriers and folks will open up and really be able to you know, discuss the things that have really lent themselves to where they are in their particular, uh, uh, with this weight management issue. Many folks have They've got an agenda when they come in to see me. There's no doubt about that. They've heard about medication. They may have been sent by the bariatric surgeon. Uh, they may have fe felt many years of shame. They understand they've got many medical conditions that need to be addressed. So I've got to be able to read, again, the tea leaves relatively quickly, but also be able to articulate the, the, the science behind what's necessary for sustainable weight loss and wellness in a very brief period of time. I got to be able to garner, you know, and get their trust very quickly. And again, that can't be forced. It happens over time and it happens with results. So the things that we use, the tools that we use, we identify all the things that are available, just as we've discussed earlier. We talk about bariatric surgery and when that's appropriate. We talk about medications and what they can do, not just the new medications that are out there, although I, I gotta tell you, they're the best, right? And it really does depend on the individuals. There are contraindications to these medications as well. So you need a clinician that understands medications, how they work, and how it's then going to be applied to the individual, right? Uh, we talk about the psychological, the emotional aspects of it, right? We talk about the familial, we talk about the heredity. <laughs> we talk about all of the things that really contribute to the problem. We address to the best extent we can, right? The things that we can address. And then we have to work around the realities. We can't do anything about genetics, right? So but, I have a question. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt. Go but on. how many, what percentage of these people when you're interviewing them and, and asking questions get emotional? Many. Yeah. And you know what? I, we've had, and it almost brings you to tears. I mean, there's no doubt about it that some folks are hurting and they're hurting bad. And, you know, and we know, I mean, we know the studies, we know that, you know, 40% of the individuals that come in, uh, they've got trauma in their lives. The, the ones that are struggling with lifetime, you know, uh, obesity, we get that. We can't, again, be all things to all people. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. The challenge for any of us, and that includes, you know, coaches, athletic trainers, is that if you have an understanding of the complexity of the problem, you understand the limitations that many of us have from an expertise standpoint, and also uh, not only, you know, and also from a time constraint and a resource perspective, right? You want to be all things to all people, but you realize that, it's impossible. But sometimes just identifying these issues for folks is a critical part, like, like we had mentioned earlier. Yeah. 
there's no shame. And oftentimes these things, there was no fault of their own, right? That right. they were put in this position. So, right. but to be able to identify it and to be able to come up with some good tangible tools to help right. address it and gradually over time, you know, uh, with some hope and optimism, be able to solve, you know, this, this real uh, serious problem. And yes, so to your point, what I've seen is that when, for example, in my life, when I stopped drinking alcohol, everything else unraveled about around why I was drinking alcohol. So if somebody gets their eating under control, whether it's through bariatric surgery, the meal replacements, or the new weight loss drugs, it's time to step into healing those aspects so that right. when they do start going back to maybe not using the drugs or they hit their, what percentage of people hit their weight loss goal? Uh, you know what, again, depends on uh, how much they have to lose coming in, obviously, okay. right? Many of the folks that uh, are on the road to bariatric surgery, uh, because of the timeline, they don't necessarily meet those goals. They're a okay. start and stopping, right? Uh, but we also have to understand human nature to some extent in terms of, you know, what people are really inclined to do. The weight medications currently, the weight loss medications, they really do help folks uh, with some of the motivation uh, and, and gives them some clarity initially, right? But it gives us as clinicians and as coaches a little bit of time now to work because people are seeing some success, right? But we have to stay, we have to stay present in what's really critical for success. And that's, the, you know, that's, that's our responsibility. And that's how I see it. When folks come to see me, it really is, okay, how have we been doing? Where are, have our failures been? How can I help you to overcome that moving forward? Not everyone has the same, uh, you know, extensive, uh, you, know, uh, you know, background in terms of, of uh, uh, trauma and so on, right? There's a, there's a lot of in between, uh, yeah. but for, for those individuals, some of them need counseling, right? Mm -hmm. And we identify that as being a possibility, right? So, uh, but again, you know, all of these, um, uh, all of these interventions, uh, you have to be mindful of them. And as a clinician, you know, we're in a unique position to be able to identify and access for folks, many of the tools, you know, that are necessary. Uh, yeah. and that's, 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 well, that's, as, a, as a coach, too, I mean, I agree with everything you said, I am never going to be all things to all people. And when it's a deeper psychological issue, and right. they're ready to face it, which right. I think most people aren't ready. But when you are ready, that, like you said, having a deeper therapy conversation, or I mean, I get people journaling, I get them visualizing, meditating. And I think that conversation with yourself, as I've been told, um, the coaching mindset is where I can ask you questions. And right. I trust that you are healthy enough mentally that inside, if I ask you the right questions, you're going to be able to come to your own conclusions in a healthy way. But right. there are some cases where maybe it's not healed trauma and they're not going to be able to come to those healthy they need, answers. Right. They, need additional they need to be health. told what to do. They need to be medicated in a different way. And I totally honor that. And right. we're not trying to be as coaches, all things to all people either. I just right. really like the idea of it's all coming together as a tribe to say, hey, there's no shame. There's no shame in stepping into no. whether it's surgery, no. whether it's right. pills, the meal right. replacements, no. whatever you choose, don't That's feel right. bad about it. You're working on yourself. And I think people like you um, in the medical model, the fact that you're open to that, the fact that you're on the psychological side and the part as a healer, where you're actually providing other tools where they can get that help because very few health professionals are comfortable sharing the reins, but you are. So I really appreciate that. And I congratulate you. How many people just in closing, would you guess? And I know it's a tough one that you have touched someone's life in the last 25 years with regard to this weight loss paradigm that you're working. Yeah, you're going to you're going to make me cry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in terms of, you know what, I get testimonials all the time from folks and it's really not, as I said earlier, it's not the end game. It really is all along being able to get feedback from folks about how whatever intervention and oftentimes it's, yeah, I mean, sure, we're managing medications and we're certainly uh, the complexities 
of you know underlying diseases and so on, right? But it's really more of this connection with folks, the empathy that you show, and the willingness to give them you know tools. And they, in va the vast majority of them, they acknowledge it. And you know what? I have had many encounters. There is nothing thousands like and thousands. Unbelievable. And you're yeah. a man on your own in this big group, and you have touched probably hundreds of thousands of lives. If you had to guess, would you agree? Well, I mean, I have a team. I have a team of coaches. So we've touched hundreds of thousands of lives, probably over half a million. But for you as an individual that is only able to one on one, right? You've done it every day for 25 years. What would you guess? Just give us a number. If it's a guess, I, we're not going to hold you to. I don't know. How many people do I see in a week? So if you see, you know, how many people a week and you've done it for, wow. you know, 52 weeks times the math. seven, that's a lot wow. of folks. How many Congrats. do you see for weight management? I mean, right. specifically, you know, one to two a day, you know, seven to 10 a week over that time, 500. Right. So thousands, right? Thousands. I mean, really. But it's also the families of those individuals, right? Mm -hmm. And the long reaching effects that you have, you touch one person, right? And how they then integrate that into their home, into that's the legacy, yeah. right? And that's really what, uh, you know, as clinicians, I think if we have a broader understanding of the, of the scope of our influence, we yeah. get that, right? Yes. And that's our responsibility. Congratulations on, uh an amazing career and for helping so many people. And thank you for helping our community. I really appreciate your insight as a expert in obesity medicine in the medical field. Thank you so much, Sean. You're welcome.